Hello everybody, my name is Davis, and welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be breaking down more severe weather that is on the way, and some hurricanes forming out in the Atlantic Ocean. So let's go ahead and break this all down today, starting off with the SPC outlook. So we have two different marginal risks of severe weather. We have one down here in the deep south. This is for damaging winds that could get up to 60 miles an hour or higher, but it is not likely. And then we have a marginal risk up here for damaging winds, large hail, and potentially even a tornado. And then we have a slight risk in here for the same thing. So let's go ahead and break down our tornado threat. It. We have a 2% chance uh, to see a tornado here in this region. This does include Duluth. This does include Minneapolis. So if you're in this region here, you have a 2% chance to see a tornado. So some very brief, weak tornadoes are definitely possible. So let's go and move on to our damaging wind threat. We have a 5% risk of damaging winds down here in the southeast, a 5% risk up here in the upper Midwest, and then a 15% risk up here in the upper Midwest. So if you're in this yellow shaded area, you have a 15% chance chance to see wind gusts of 60 miles an hour or higher so look out for that let's go and move on to the large hail threat which looks very similar to the damaging wind threat other than it is a little bit bigger in the slight risk and uh the southeast is not included for a hail threat so if you're in this yellow shaded area you have a 15 percent chance to see hail of one inch or larger so look out for that Let's go and move on to tomorrow where we have a marginal risk of severe weather over here for the eastern Midwest into the Ohio Valley. Uh, this is actually the same line of storms that is happening today. Uh, this is going to move down to the south and the east here and affect Ohio, Indiana, as well as Michigan. Uh, our tornado threat for tomorrow is currently very low but could get upgraded, so obviously be aware of that. Uh, then we have our damaging wind risk. We have a 5% chance of damaging winds here, and then a 5% chance of 1 inch or larger hail here. So look out for that. And then moving into Friday, that line of storms will go back up north and east, and eventually end up in the New England region. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot quite break down the threats for uh, Friday yet, but uh, yeah, look out if you're in the northeast for Friday. So moving on to the Climate Prediction Center, uh, this is our day 6 to 10 temperature outlook. So this is from August 22nd to August 26th. In my last severe weather breakdown, I talked about a massive heat dome that was expanding across the country. It has gotten bigger, but the worst of it has become more isolated and has moved down completely to the deep south. So Mississippi, Alabama, southern Arkansas, Louisiana, and east Texas. I know you're all used to extremely high temperatures, but get ready for it to get even hotter here as we go into late August. And then we also have a cold dome building up here in the northeast, actually, which is pretty interesting because it's kind of combating the heat dome down here. So if you're in the northeast, from August 22nd to August 26th, you could be seeing some below average temperatures. And as it begins to cool down in general across the U.S., it might get a little chilly up here, especially since it's usually already cold in the northeast. Especially in very northern parts of Maine, we could see highs in the 60s. So uh, it might be time to break out the jackets, you know, get ready for uh, for the fall. So let's go ahead and move on to the day 6 to 10 precipitation outlook. We have a massive drought that goes along with our heat dome. Uh, so from August 22nd to August 26th, you are most likely going to be seeing below average precipitation in this region here in the deep south as well as a little bit into the Midwest. So uh, definitely look out for that. It will be very hot, very dry, pretty miserable overall. And then we have a massive area of higher chances of precipitation over here in the uh the west um barely got that out for some reason i don't know why i'm struggling with very basic words but i am um up here in northeastern california northwestern nevada it is going to be so wet it is going to rain a ton and i know you guys aren't super used to that over here so uh get ready to have some fun days it is going to be very wet in this region very well wet in this dark green layer and even above average in this dark green layer outside of that it's unsure but it might be above average so look out for that uh very wet very rainy over here uh, so let's go ahead and move on to our day 8 to day 14 outlook. So this is from August 24th to August 30th. So if you have any events planned on those dates, listen up now. Uh, here we have a, a huge cold dome expanding uh, that goes into the Ohio Valley a little bit, into the south even a little bit, into the Midwest a little bit. It's it's building up here, I'll be honest. And it's uh, once again fighting the heat dome over here and kind of winning because this 
is kind of just a normal heat dome that we would see now. It's not super dark red, as you saw earlier, uh, and it's not quite as big. So it's not going to be quite as hot from August 24th to August 30th, but still very warm down here in the deep south, so look out for that. And uh, yeah, that's our day 8 through day 14 uh, temperature outlook. So let's move on to our day 8 through day 14 precipitation outlook. We still have a little bit of a drought happening in this region here, but it's not certain at this point. There's about a 40 to 50% chance to see below average precipitation in this region here. And then a 33 to 40% chance to see that in this uh, kind of tan shaded area. Uh, and it is going to be quite a bit wet still. Not super wet, but a little wet up here. Uh, our uh, precipitation wetness dome, as I'm going to call it, because I think that sounds kind of cool. Kind of moved to the northeast a little bit. And now includes many portions of Idaho, uh, Oregon, and Washington, as well as still a little bit of Nevada, and even western bits of Montana. So if you're in that region, you might see above average precipitation. Uh, same thing here for this little dome here in eastern Utah and western Colorado. So now it's time to talk about the National Hurricane Center, which, like I said, the Atlantic is getting a little nuts out here. So first off, we have this right here. This has a 20% chance to form into a cyclone in the next seven days. And if this forms, it's going to be right next to Texas and Louisiana. But, like I said, there's only a 20% chance to form in the next week, and after that, it's probably not going to form. Um, so, even if it does form, it's probably going to be pretty weak, stay in the Tropical Depression, Tropical Storm labels. So, it shouldn't be too uh, unordinary from any other severe thunderstorm that you've ever been in. So, look out for it, but don't be scared of it. Uh, these are a little more concerning, but they are going to stay out in the ocean, luckily. This one has a 50% chance to form in the next 7 days, and this one also has a 50% chance to form in the next 7 days. But luckily, like I said, these are just going to be going up off to the north, just hurting the fishies and nobody else if they do form. Let's move on to the eastern Pacific here where we have Tropical Storm Hillary, which is uh, actually going to go a little bit up here. Might even reach extreme western bits of California. So California, be looking out. But again, don't be scared of this because it won't be super crazy, just like any other strong thunderstorm. Uh, and then we have this area here that has a 20% chance to form in the next seven days, so probably won't, and even if it does, not looking like it's going to go anywhere. And then we have Tropical Storm Fernanda, which, uh, it might go for Hawaii, but we'll see. Moving on to the Central Pacific, we do have Tropical Storm Greg out here. We've got a ton of tropical storms in the Pacific right now. Uh, but it's going to go way south of Hawaii and not hit, luckily. Um, that would be pretty bad, but yeah. So finally, let's go and break down the excessive rainfall outlook. So we have four different marginal risks of excessive rainfall meeting flash flooding guidance here today. One in the southeast, one in New England, one in the desert southwest, and one in California. So if you're in any of those regions, you have a 5% chance to see flash flooding. Uh, tomorrow, very similar, nothing too concerning. Uh, but then moving into Friday, we do have a slight risk here in portions of Arizona and Utah. So if you're in that yellow bit there, you have a 15% chance to see flash flooding on Friday. So look out for that. Then moving into Saturday, we have another 15% chance that moves a little bit out west and now includes portions of Nevada, including Las Vegas. This still does include Phoenix, so look out for that Friday and Saturday. And then even going into Sunday, once again, the threat moves a little bit west, but still including Las Vegas, still uh, now including Los Angeles and other portions of the desert southwest here. So you could see above average precipitation that will lead to excessive rainfall. So uh, yeah, definitely. Definitely look out for that, but that's all I have for this video. Uh, if you guys did enjoy, make sure to subscribe. This one was a bit more professional than my other severe weather breakdowns. Those were kind of more casual. I kind of want to move into the more professional region of things here now that I've been doing this for a while. So uh, yeah, see you guys in the next one. Peace.